be ready. You know how sometimes after big economic mess ups like the dot com bubble in 2001 or the housing crash in 2008, some smart folks end up making a ton of money? Well, that's kind of what we're looking at now. A lot of people miss these chances to make big gains because they don't see them coming. We're going to dive into what's happening, what to watch out for, and the common mistakes to avoid. Plus, we'll explore why the next 10 years could be full of amazing opportunities to make some serious dough. Firstly, have you ever wondered what happens to the stock market when interest rates start to fall? It's like a hidden signal for potential financial bonanza. Imagine this, as interest rates decline over the coming years, it's not just a small shift, it's a game changer for stocks. This scenario is akin to a green light for investors, signaling them to move away from the sidelines and dive into the stock market. When interest rates drop, the appeal of keeping money in traditionally safer places, like money market accounts, start to wane. Why settle for a 3% return in a money market account when you could potentially earn more in the stock market? This shift in investor behavior can create a ripple effect as more people move their funds from low yielding accounts to stocks. The demand for these stocks increase, potentially driving up their prices. It's a classic case of supply and demand at work. So if you're sitting on a pile of cash waiting for the right moment, remember this, a decline in interest rates might just be the cue you need, but staying out of the market, you risk missing out on significant growth opportunities. In essence, when interest rates fall, it's not just a small economic footnote, it could be the catalyst that sends the stock market soaring, offering savvy investors a chance to capitalize on this upward trajectory. Next, let's talk about how the rich seem to get richer while the rest of us struggle. It's like a never-ending cycle. For example, the middle class is shrinking big time. Their wealth has almost halved, while the rich folks seen their wealth grow by about 30%. And since 2008 financial mess, the average American family is actually less wealthy than they were back in 1998. That's pretty shocking, right? The reason? Rich people have more cash to save and invest, especially when interest rates are low or when prices go up due to inflation. That's how the top 1% keep doubling their wealth compared to everybody else. Now let's look at some historical example just to understand this. Take Germany after World War I. They had to print so much money to pay for war damages that their currency became almost worthless. Or Zimbabwe where they printed $100 trillion notes that were only worth 40 cents in the US. These countries had huge money problems, which led to skyrocketing prices for everything. Argentina, Turkey, Iran, and Venezuela had similar issues, with high inflation and stock prices going through the roof. So, could something like this happen in the US? To figure that out, we need to understand the difference between the interest rates set by the Federal Reserve, or the nominal rates, and the real rates which consider inflation. Sometimes, even when interest rates seem high, they're actually pretty low once you factor in inflation. This has happened a lot in the last 20 years. For example, in 2001, the real interest rate was only 2.2%, and in 2020, it was even lower, meaning borrowing money was super cheap. But here's the thing. Every big economic disaster was usually caused by periods of really low or negative interest rates, like in Zimbabwe or Argentina. These countries also had a lot of borrowing and money printing going on, which led to a loss of confidence in their economies. Could that happen in the US? Well, it's a bit different here. Our economy has its issues, like a huge national debt and political divisions, but we're also pretty stable for the last 50 years. And the US dollar is still the world's main currency. It's been steadily going up the last several years. Now, about the middle class shrinking. Some folks argue it's not disappearing, it's just more people are moving into higher income groups. The US has the smallest middle class compared to similar countries, but we also have the largest group of rich and poor people. This suggests that people are either getting richer or poorer. And even though the middle class's overall wealth is going down, part of that's because some of them are actually making more money. When we compare the US to countries like Germany, Zimbabwe, or Argentina, we see that even though their stock markets went up, their currencies lost a lot of value compared to the US dollar, so their real purchasing power went down a lot. These countries also had big problems like war, corruption, and sanctions, which made it hard for them to recover. But here's the deal. In the US, we've already seen some of this happen on a smaller scale. When inflation went up and interest rates went down, people who had money to invest made a lot, while others lost out. 
The real issue isn't just about income, it's about who has the money to invest. Rich folks can't take more risks and make more money, while others can't afford to take those risks and end up spending more on basic needs because of inflation. So what can you do? Stick to the basics. Save more than you spend, invest in a diverse range of things, don't panic, 